Hey, good afternoon, third year class. Um, Dean here. Just want to talk to you guys a little about reclosures as we move into book five. We'll start with a video about reclosures. It'll be another video about sectionalizers. Um, start with a quick disclaimer. None of this in here is meant to be actual operating instructions on how to use these in the field. This is uh, informational about how they work, some peculiarities about reclosures, hydraulic reclosures in particular, and just general guidelines. For operational purposes, refer to the actual operating manual that is published by the manufacturer of the device. Um, with that, let's get started. Okay, here's a view of the re recloser we're going to be working on. This is a Type H uh, recloser. I'm going to move over and see if we can get a little bit closer up uh, look at some of the things we're looking at. Right over here is the operating handle that is in the trip position. On this side, on this recloser, you'll see there's missing a little red handle that would be right inside this little notch. That would be where you would actually take your hold. So we're going to go ahead and close this back in. And one thing is a operating principle on these hydraulic reclosers is in cold weather, sometimes it is necessary to hold that operating handle in the end position for a short period of time. And you're not overriding fault current with that. What you're doing is you're waiting for the hydraulic fluid to catch up. Another thing to keep in mind with these, up here on the top, it tells you how it is set up. This one is set up for one A curve and three C curves. So that gives you a total of four operations. The A curve is the fast curve. The C curve is the slow, slower curve. So let's uh, pause the video for a little bit and get this thing out of the tank and uh, start on the inside of it. Okay, everybody, we've got this recloser out of the tank now, as you can see. And I wanna talk about a couple of things about what makes this thing work and uh, how it actually operates. Now keep in mind, here's the tank. Um, one of the things that has to have maintenance on is this paper liner. When you uh, change the oil and do maintenance, you also change this paper liner out. This one has been, oil has been drained out of it. A couple things we want to look at on this. Right in here, you can see this, this little piston and you can see that it's set on the third hole. That is where we set the, the slow curves on this recloser. So down here, we also see this plate, and we'll see that there's the B and the C. This is also for the slow curve setting, and you can see this one is set to the C curve, and that matches up with what we saw on the data plate on the top. If we were going to use the B curve, we would have the B, B number on that little pin. And again, the operations, number of operations, we can see where this is pinned on the third operation. So down here at the bottom of this, we can see the actual contacts. And I'll turn this around so you can see a little better. And what we can see is that these are the actual contacts that make and break the operation. This is open, closed. So I'll turn this around a little bit. We're going to look at how this actually operates. You'll notice in the middle here, this is the, the actual fault current coil. This is what determines the recloser is seeing fault current and what this does is it pulls a piston down inside of this coil. When it pulls that piston down it causes these contacts to open. Then the recloser then through the hydraulic principle has them reclose based on our time curves that are assigned back up here. And each time this operates, this little piston advances a little more and a little more 
and that's because of this as it goes up every time it pumps up and eventually it gets up to where it contacts the trip arm which you can see right up there and that now trips open so now the recloser is open you can see the operation counter up behind the handle the handle indicating an open trip hey third year class it's dean here again I'm going to talk a little bit more about we've been on the topic of uh, reclosers and sectionalizers lately and uh, this is going into the single phase hydraulic sectionalizer you notice this unit is much smaller than the Previously, we talked about the Type H hydraulic recloser. This is a little single phase um, section. So a couple things to start with on the data. You'll notice up here that it shows what size coil is in it. This is the trip coil. And uh, that is what you can use to set up what it operates with. And that needs to be coordinated with the upstream device, the recloser that we just talked about couple of things to look at over here on this data plate. Number of operations to lock out. Keep in mind this number three as we move through these videos and we talk about how to set it up with a recloser. Here on the side, we've got this. You'll see that this is what some people refer to as a Kyle switch, and that's where that comes from. Kyle sectionalizer type GH, it's a little hydraulic sectionalizer. If we put this down, we'll notice that it is open. Push it up, and it takes a pretty good amount of force to get it to actually close. Let me get that. Now we're closed back in again. You can see the handle is in the up position. A little bit about how this unit works. Um, if we look down here, this right here is the trip coil. And this is what register what actually provides the force uh, when this thing operates. And how it operates is this trip coil is looking for fault current. And every time this sees fault current, is it pushes this down. This operates down and it does not open the switch, but what it does, it works kind of like a little hydraulic jack. And then when that fault current goes away when the upstream device, the recloser in this case, opens, the fault current goes away. That counts as one pump on this little hydraulic jack. And if you look at that up here, if we can get a good look, get the sun just right maybe, you can see that this is on the third hole on this little, this where this pin is installed. There are two holes above it. Anyway, getting back to that, as this thing sees fault current on and then go away, it keeps pumping this up like a little hydraulic jack. And every time as it goes up, one more operation, it eventually gets to that trip point, and that's what trips the section. And you can see down here at the bottom, here are the actual close or the contacts here and here and that's the basic operation of this sectionalizer and there will be more to discuss on hey third year class dean here again with continuing our discussion around uh the recloser and a sectionalizer and how these two work together again we got our same little type h hydraulic recloser single phase unit and we can see that it's set for uh, four operations, one fast, three slow. Our little uh, single phase sectionalizer, also another little hydraulic device. You can see that it's closed. It's set for three operations to lock out. And again, closed in, and here's the trip coil. And what this trip coil does is this counts how many times it sees fault current. And this is set to have three operations before it locks out. So looking at these two together, we're going to put it as this is our load side of the recloser, our source side of the sectionalizer, and our load side of the sectionalizer. We're simulating that there would be a fault on this load side or the downstream side of this sectionalizer. 
when that fault occurs, this trip coil is going to see fault current and it's going to pull down and that allows fluid into the pump and it just operates just like a little hydraulic jack. That is like raising the handle on the hydraulic jack. Over here at the recloser, the recloser is going to pull down and its trip coil as well, but that's going to cause the contacts to open. As soon as those contacts open, that fault current goes away and this trip coil on the sectionalizer is going to rise back up. And that's the same as pushing the handle down on a little hydraulic jack. And that's going to raise this to its first trip notch. Okay, so in this case, the recloser has reclosed. It's doing its thing. It's a recloser. But now the fault is still here. So the fault is still here. The trip coil goes ahead and pulls back down again. The recloser says fault's still there. It opens and recloses. And while it's open, this trip coil goes back up. That's put two pumps on the little jack. So again, recloser closes back in. Fault is still here. This trip coil pulls down again a third time. Recloser is opened, but now while that contacts are open, this goes up to a third trip and opens. And the recloser then comes back up, closes in with a successful close, and everybody between this recloser and this sectionalizer are back in power. Everybody downstream of this sectionalizer are locked out.